we touched on eating and water in Lulu's talk on March 19th. Another universal element humans share, other than eating, is sleeping. While we all know that we need sleep, TCM has an especially strong understanding in why timing is so important. The invention of artificial light is a pretty recent event in human history. We need to be thankful to Edison for his great invention, yet sometimes forget to stay humble in how we use this invention. Light pollution is a major issue in global cities, and metropolitans like New York City are bright 24-7. With this artificial light, people are no longer forced to sleep when the sun goes down, and many do not even feel tired late at night. When I first walked through Times Square after midnight, I was like any other light-stimulated person in the crowd. Years later, I realized that this guarantees good business for the hospitals. What was life like when candles and oil lamps were all that we had to light our world with? Dark? Dangerous possibly, but never dull. Ancient Egyptians were among the first people known to use solar energy on a large scale to heat their homes. The ancient Greeks, Romans, Native Americans, and Chinese also used similar techniques to help regulate the environment, including temperature in their homes. Greek houses and bathing buildings were built with large windows facing south to take advantage of the strongest sun rays for the longest possible periods. The ancient Romans used many of these same techniques in their famous baths. Similar principles show up in traditional Chinese buildings, and there were delicate principles based on who, when, where, although that was extended to more than its origin in architects. Interior designers and real estate brokers might have heard the word feng sui. In traditional Chinese medicine, also known as TCM, daytime under the sun corresponds to yang, while the darkness at night corresponds to yin. Thus, the darkness at night can be used to nourish yin, among with other methods. That, in part, explains why sleep during dark nights is different than sleep when sunlight is present even if the number of hours remains the same. In case you're not familiar with the concept of yin and yang, we will talk about that in another episode. Please click on the subscribe button below for Herbal Pow channel updates. For now, it's enough to know that night is yin and day is yang. Night and day form a yin-yang pair. There are clear guidelines about when we are designed to go to sleep and wake up in Yellow Emperor's Internal Canon of Medicine. It provides the principles over the different seasons as followed. In the three month of spring, all things on the earth begin to grow. The nature is resuscitating and all things are sprouting. People may sleep late in the night and get up early in the morning, taking a walk in the courtyard with loose clothing and hair running free to relax the body and live in the mind. Summer is the period of prosperity. The chi from heaven and earth have converged and all things are in blossom. It's best for people to sleep late in the night and get up early in the morning, avoiding any detestations with longer hot daytime and anxiety in life. Fall or autumn is the season of ripening, the wind blows fast and the atmosphere is clear. It's best to go to bed early and get up just like the hens and roosters. People should keep their mind in peace to alleviate the soughing effect of the fall. Winter is the season for storage. The water freezes and earth cracks. Care must be taken not to disturb ye. It's best for people to go to bed early in the night and get up late in the morning when the sun is shining. As you can tell, it's healthy to spend less time in bed in spring and summer and more in fall and winter as that helps sprouting and prospering chi, also known as vital energies in our body in spring and summer. And sleeping more in fall and winter 
helps preserve yang energy and prevents the loss of yang. Obviously, our modern way of life is much different from our ancestors who farmed the land, relying mostly on natural lights, and were very aware of these changes. But this subtle shift in daylight can have a major impact on our daily life and health as the seasons change. As we approach each season and the sun sets and rises earlier or later, our circadian rhythm naturally changes as well. In our modern world, many of us are unaware and continue on the same schedule of bedtime and waking as we have in our workplace. But our bodies and brain are still tuned into the changing rhythm. Note that early and late is relative and personal. Can we get a rule of thumb? Here they are. In ancient China, 9 p.m. is called Rindin, human common, and was considered bedtime, and 11 p.m. was considered late. 9 to 11 p.m. is the time when the triple burner is at work, and our body is designed to be restful during that time. The triple burner refers to the organ system as a whole, and this period is thought to be when it generates the most amount of energy. That's why sometimes we feel sleepy around 9 p.m., but get more sober after 11 p.m. TCM understands that different times of the day have different results for the organ system. For example, besides 9 to 11 p.m. when the triple burner is at work, midnight is an important time and was called the Z hour, and a night's sleep is called Z sleep relative to a nap in the middle of the day. Why? Because it is believed that one hour's sleep during this time is worth many folds at other times. That's also why one night shift or all nighter can take more than a normal night's number of hours to make up. No wonder in English we also use burning the midnight oil to represent staying up late. Human nature is universal. Outside of ancient China, the writer of Ecclesiastes tells us that God appointed a time, a season for every activity under heaven. Just like the time when we sow has an impact on what we can reap. You can sleep for the same length of time and have an extremely different result in your health. Sowing hard in the winter would not give you nearly the same results as less efforts in spring. Although modern life makes it difficult for us to sleep during 9 to 11 p.m., many of us can still try 11 p.m. whenever feasible. 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. is the period when the gallbladder meridian starts to be at work, and it can only detox when we are asleep. It's healthy to be fully asleep during the time of 1 a.m. to 3 a.m., as this is when the liver is performing important detox functionality. TCM has been advocating this lifestyle for 5,000 years, and our Yellow Emperor's internal canon of medicine has been there for approximately 2,700 years. But people ignore, doubt, or criticize it without even taking the energy to read it. The TCM classics, including Yellow Emperor's canon of medicine, were written in ancient Chinese language, so most Chinese nowadays who are not well trained in both ancient Chinese and TCM don't understand it either. Then, 2017 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine was announced. Those people immediately got excited about the Nobel winning research on the gene that controls the biological clock and circadian rhythm, the sleep-wake cycle. History repeats itself in that good science is usually proving what TCM has already taught for thousands of years. So please, subscribe to Herbal Pow Channel for contents from ancient wisdom that could become future Nobel headlines. Because of 4 a.m. was part of a speech by Kobe Bryant, the basketball superstar, talking about hard work and effort, in addition to talent, which was behind his success. From a TCM standpoint though, this is part because 4 a.m. actually goes with nature, not against it. Why? 3 a.m. in the morning corresponds to awakening insects of the solar term. So waking up at 4 a.m. is not harmful, although 3 to 5 a.m. is a good time for certain patients to heal, since that's the peak time of the Lund Meridian. Specifically, 
Those who have respiratory system issues associated with the Lund Meridian are more likely to show symptoms such as dry coughs during this time window. One of Herbal Pal's partnering doctors suggests that her depression patients go take a walk to watch sunrise because that helps open up the chi in the heart. Make sure not the sun in the late morning or around noon. That's a little too strong and could backfire. Hypothetically, if someone gives a speech because of consistent working at 1 to 3 a.m., that work ethic would probably not be sustainable. In fact, modern research is now confirming that people who stayed up during 1 to 3 a.m. consistently are at a high risk for not only cancers, but many other chronic diseases. In Chinese, staying up late is called aoye, literally translated as burning and tormenting the night, meaning burning out the jing qi sen, the essential substance and energy foundations of ourselves. Imagine a pot on fire, and there's water in it. When being burnt, the water inside gets less and less. The water is like the jing body fluid in the human body. When the water gets less, jing body fluid is insufficient. Then the faster the temperature of water rises. That's why people who stay up often tend to get sanghuo or upper heatness issues, such as mouth, ulcer, or acne. Don't be misled by this graph, because the pictured organs in this chart is not the same as the organ definition in TCM. It's the entire system. For example, skin is part of the lung system. So treat the graph for information only. Sometimes we even experience the near death pleasure to the point that some creative artists and people who perform work that needs deep thinking have gotten addicted to this feeling. This can be developed into a dangerous habit and they could stay up late to experience that feeling. There was a period of time I was working actually in healthcare at a comprehensive cancer center. My daily job was intense and I was sleeping at 3 a.m. while waking up at 6 a.m. seven days a week. Of course, there wasn't even enough time to think about vacation. Despite the initial pleasures I had staying up each 1 to 3 a.m., I almost felt like I was dying after more than a year. This has had permanent repercussions on my health. What those night owls and I didn't know was, the similar pleasures out of quietness and inspiration can still be there if they wake up early. For example, do the work upon waking up at 5 a.m. instead of 2 a.m. and can reach the same level of productivity without damaging our health. It is best to sleep by time. While it is admirable that night shift people do what they do, it is not optimal. Modern people have to do it sometimes, and it's best to minimize it. Go with nature, like the flowing of water. It's easier than going against it. If you happen to belong to those who have to either work night shifts or chronically stay up, please subscribe to Herbal Pal for suggestions on how to mitigate the harm in another video. In this episode, we reviewed the basics and timing for sleep. Please subscribe to Herbal Pow channel to hear more about dreaming, insomnia, and other sleep issues. Please share this video to those who might benefit from it. We plan to have more educational contents up on Herbal Pow channel soon.